and AIA Australia, helping your clients in their time of need is our number one priority. In 2016, we paid over $1.15 billion in claims to both retail and group members. That's over $4.5 million every working day. To offer your clients cover you can trust, chat to your AIA CDM today. And welcome to XY Live. We've got Joss Wingrove and Sammy Robinson from Melbourne. Welcome, guys. Thanks Thank you. Thanks for having us. Big shout out to AIA for supporting the XY Lives that we do. Um, Josh and Sammy are from Pursue Wealth down in, uh, in Melbourne, and we've, we're actually uh, having Sammy on our event next week, uh, the client experience, which is, which is pretty exciting. You pumped for that, Sammy? Oh, always. No, I'm, I'm actually, I'm really looking forward to it. It's an awesome location. It sold out, sold out weeks ago. Must have been oh, the headline no. act that you're coming Same on. Like me. What can you expect? <laughs> and so, whiskey bar, so that's pretty good. <laughs> I think that was an easy sell, the whole whiskey bar. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> bars, so the guards floating around as well, so that'll be yeah, fun. So we, we've got Sammy and Josh here today to talk about the journey they've had in the last few weeks, uh, sorry, few months, uh, getting a advisory board in place for their advice practice. It's, there was, there's reasons why they've gone about it. Uh, it's been quite a journey for them and uh, they've got a lot to share in terms of other practices that might want to be going down the same route and why you would do it. So to start off, it'd be great to hear a bit more about you guys for, for the people that don't understand your journey and where you guys have come from. Yeah, yeah cool. Um, so I originally come from a bit of an accounting background, so from country South Australia. Um, and so I kind of worked as an accountant and saw the light, moved across to the financial advice side about six and a half years ago. But from there, I kind of um, went, you know, down the path, worked for AMP, and then I started a financial advice firm and an accounting practice, and then learned a fair bit around that, and then kind of hence then started Pursue Wealth. Yeah. So we kind of did that together. So we kind of utilised the process of doing that to help set up our business today. Yeah. I mean, my background was um, probably quite similar in terms of the amount of time that we've had in advice. I started, I guess, power planning, client services, that type of role, and then stepped up um, into AMP Horizons, um, which is where Josh and I actually met. So I'm originally from Toowoomba, and like Josh said, he's from. SA and so it's a true love story of the numbers there yeah. making horizons <laughs> <laughs> that's how all romance happens um, well, the, romance, the romance couple of the financial advice industry yeah. <laughs> oh, <God. Yep>. yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so uh, I guess after you know doing our internship and stuff like that so I started advising quite young so I was 20 when I started um, giving advice and then we moved to Melbourne together and wanted to, you know, get some experience before we went out and then started our mm -hmm. own practice. And after a little bit of time, so we started Stuart in 2014. Um, and I suppose we just kind of wanted to do something we're really passionate about and, and really focus on, um, you know, a key target market and something just being a little bit selfish, I guess, in, in the people that we wanted to work with and mm -hmm. all about yeah, having fun, I guess, mm -hmm. is a big thing for us. Definitely. Yeah, there's no doubt having the pair of you would have definitely helped because it's it's a it's a challenge starting an advice practice and having two would have uh, made the journey, uh, I, I guess, much more. Without each other, to be honest, we're kind of pretty lucky in that respect, and yeah, kind of set out a few. Well, because we were on both on the same page, we kind of set out a lot of the things we're both in charge of, so we didn't have arguments at work, <laughs> which then would have been outside of work as well yeah. when we went home. So. Kind of made that pretty clear from the start, which was great. Yeah, yeah I've met a few advice practices where uh, the couples are both in the practice and it seems to work really well, I think, because yeah. dealing with lots of different clients and having different types of people that, like, obviously you two are different types of people, so it means that you can work with uh, different people and different personalities better, each of you. Yeah. So. yeah, for sure. I mean, there's days where we don't really even see each other as well, so... It kind of feels like when we're at work, we're at work. We don't really talk about personal stuff. We kind of keep pretty set for as well. So are you saying that's a good thing, Josh? Or is that... <laughs> um... <laughs> I was wondering where he's going with it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, he, he's no, like, no, I took no, a break every now and again. Like, Sammy has some money, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, awesome. So, so Pursue Wealth has been going along. You guys have uh, a few, uh, you're an expanding team. Yeah, uh, there's a couple, yeah. two or three you've got now that are in your team. 
Well, <laughs> actually... Um, well, think about this this morning. I'm trying to work out how many we have. And we're looking and we're starting out here. We've got six staff and then we're putting another one on. So we have seven probably by the end of the year. So kind of growing pretty quickly. Yeah. And is, is there an overarching target market that you guys have your sights on? Yeah, definitely. So we, um, like I said, well, our whole value base and why we started the business was all around wanting to have fun and um, just mm-hmm. enjoying our lifestyle as well as doing what we really love. And mm-hmm. so both of our background in financial advice, like Joshy was probably more so in the high net worth, self-managed, super fun, that type of space, whereas my background was retiree space. And we were kind of, I guess, a little bit over, well, I was in particular overhearing like, oh, I went, where were you 20 years ago? Where were you 30 years ago? You could have helped me so much more back then. And so we just kind of wanted to work with people that are like us. So, you know, they're motivated, they're go-getters, probably realistically, I would say 90% of our client base is between uh, 25 and 45 um, mm-hmm. in, in that bracket. We have very few uh, in other spaces and, and they were all well, like, essentially the family and friends that yeah. sit outside it's like you know our parents and things like that, that yeah. are, you know older that we really just want to help yeah so otherwise, it's, otherwise they're yeah, pretty strict on who we take on board yeah and, and really the main reason was we, we love seeing the the difference and people who are wanting to make the changes in their lifestyle and really just keen to keep some goals and we've been able to when you're really strict in the beginning as to who you work with and it's really hard i guess um, at the beginning when you're saying no to particular people. But if you're so strict on that at the get-go, it, they just keep um, replicating, I guess, in terms of the, the type of person that you bring on board. And that's been the best thing that we've ever done, I guess. And when we first started the business, we went around and asked people, like, what would you change? Like, if you went back, what would you do? And they said, you know, get really niche at the beginning because we've all got mm-hmm. these, you know, D and D clients that we want to essentially... We only dealt with them because we had to in the beginning, whereas we kind of started out and said, well, we're not going to have that. And that was by far the hardest thing. For me, you know, spending all the money on setting up the business structure, the website, Mm -hmm. looking at marketing, Mm -hmm. Sam and I both leaving our full-time work and then, you know, going into a lease and we had no client base and saying no to people. Mm -hmm. Wow, it was ridiculously hard you know yeah. we'll negative you know 30 50 thousand before we'd even got a dollar in the door so yeah, yeah it was yeah, scary, uh, scary to us starting in advice practice sometimes it's uh yeah but worth it now i reckon yeah definitely Absolutely. worth it now. you guys are killing it so like this this is all stuff that you guys had gone through before so and that's that's a great story in itself but the recent journey around the advisory board, where has that come from? Where, why, why did you take that journey? Yeah. Well, there's a few reasons, I guess, because um, Sam and I work in the business together and then we have the personal life outside of work. We kind of like are in each other's lives all the time. So one of the external party, I guess, to help us and see if there's any gaps in what we're doing, which there always is. We're not perfect. No one's perfect. So... We wanted them to kind of build us and help us kind of focus on certain things because we've got a lot of different ideas we're going to come up with. So it kind of guide us in the right direction. And we didn't really know where to go to. So we thought, well, you know, what have a lot of good advice practices got? And a lot of them do have a great advisory board to help them. And we thought we'd just go down that path from there. Yeah. So I think um, the biggest thing, like, so Josh and I have always got these, you know, big ideas that we're wanting to do and we're in, wanting to implement in the business. and. You know, we've got our priority matrix in terms of, you know, what we think is the biggest priority and, and what we should be working on now. I guess we wanted um, an external person to look at that and say, okay, well, are these activities that you're doing actually working towards your vision as to where the practice wants to go, but also personally as well? So in a way, um, and, and we're lucky with the people that, that we have on the board, is that they're able to, to link them both together and ensure that our business activity is working towards the bigger vision of the practice, but also for us personally as well. So that was another big point for us, just having that independent point of view as to well, mm-hmm. the stuff we're doing every day, is that is that really valuable and is that getting us where we want to be fast enough? Yeah. How, so you, so you, made the, you made the call that you you wanted to do this. How did you, what were the next steps? Like, what did, where'd you look? How'd you, how'd you find someone to help you? 
Yeah. Yeah, we kind of start off with, well, what do we actually want to get out of it? Mm. So what, why are we going to start the advisory board? And for us, it was really around like leadership and management styles, but also then kind of aligning all of our goals personally and with the business because they kind of directly relate for us. Yeah. So we're like, okay, well, we want kind of those two areas. So we need to kind of fill those two gaps. So we thought, well, who can we kind of get to fill those two gaps? And so we looked at someone who's kind of in the management side of things and like had a lot of experience in the management. Mm-hmm. And then we looked at someone who could help us with the focus and decision making as well. So we kind of went with someone in the industry and someone external to the industry to get both points of view. Yeah. So, so I think kind of um, one of the, the other things that we did prior to that was go around and talk to other practitioners mm. that have advisory boards and just kind of say, well, what are you actually getting out of it? Did you find it beneficial? And we found that it was kind of hit and miss. Some people loved it mm. and had them in the beginning and then disassembled them. And then um, mm. other people thought it was just a little bit too confronting and got rid of it straight away. So okay. um, I suppose the advice that we're giving right from the get-go is you have to have pretty thick skin to have an advisory board <laughs> because okay. um, yeah. when somebody, I mean, as a business owner, we all know we think of our businesses like our babies realistically and, you know, mm. we, we know that they've got faults but you don't want to hear it, <laughs> I guess. Was it like saying you've got an ugly child? <laughs> 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 That's a good analogy, yeah. <laughs> So it is, and, and that was probably one of the, the big things. We were going into it and saying, okay, we have to have an open mind and we have to keep thinking about why we want this and, and we do want the best thing for the business and for our members. So how can we, you know, take it on the chin as to the mm. feedback that they give? So the people we looked for, we also, I suppose, talked through how we would be most receptive to receiving advice and, and we were they are unreal, realistically. Mm. They're really Did respectful. You- did you notice a correlation between the ones that uh, had continued with an advisory board and the performance of their business or perceived performance of their business at least? Yeah, um, that's the thing. Um, do you know what? Yeah. Probably um, I'd say maybe more focused. Okay. It, it didn't so much vary in terms of the size of the practices that we were talking to. Because, I mean, they, like you said, perception-wise, they were all very successful and that's why we asked them. Realistically, it's like, well, what are you doing that, you know, you've you built such a great business? Um, so perception-wise, I mean, all great businesses. Um, but for me, it probably seems like they're a little bit more focused and a little bit more targeted in terms of, well, this is our vision and this is where we're going. Mm. And, you know, this is how long it's going to take, I guess. Um, yeah, yeah, I definitely. reckon that's probably what the biggest thing that I saw. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Mm. So is that is that sort of is that what you've noticed in the like from then till now that the clarity's changed and yeah, obviously- <laughs> yeah for sure yeah I mean going through the process we kind of put together exactly you know our vision and our mission what our personal goals and business goals were and even just going through it initially it kind of changed and we kind of went back okay well what is actually what do we want to get out of this like what are our short and medium term personal goals and they pretty much relate to the business goals as well. Yeah. Mm. And, you know, one one of our key goals is to be able to step away from the business for a month and not have to worry about it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, with that becomes a lot of things, you know, like, you know, the staffing and who are they going to talk to, like clients that have questions, who are they going to go to, like, yeah. it just opens up a lot of different things around that. So, yeah, kind of that helps a lot, actually. So that, that, initial, that initial goals and mission... Like I, I went through Horizons as well, so you're probably, yeah, yeah. you're probably redoing that that you did originally when you had no idea what you were doing. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes it difficult to do it later on once you actually have figured out what advice is a bit more. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Very true. Yeah. yeah. I remember doing mine and I was like, I, I think I'm just making things up because i got no idea what this, what's going on here. Yeah, funny. We, were, we were talking about that, that business the other day and we were going geez we have no idea and I remember the the feedback that I got from the guy who was marking mine was like when I talk to you I see so much passion why can't you articulate that and I was like because I don't know what I don't know like I don't know (laughs) what is the business that I want and how we're going to create it and where's it going to go I don't know yeah, so, it was so, I think because of that, it's so it's so hard to do when you don't know that stuff. Like, if you actually want to be true to, like, have a good business plan and not just get something to paper. Um, exactly. 
I'm sure it was a lot easier this time when you were going through this process because you knew yeah. what was important to you by now. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. It was really cool. And then, but the interesting thing was, I mean, even stuff like that, they were really um, happy to give us feedback as to, okay, well, how is this actually aligning to where you want to be? Let's, let's strip back and go all the way back to vision, mission, values, yeah. and ensure that all of that is really genuinely where you've grown to because as the business grows, it doesn't mean that, that all of those things can't grow with you. So um, just kind of going back to basics as well was, was really interesting and stuff that we were like, oh, we'll breeze through this. Like that's the stuff that doesn't matter. And they're like, hang on a second, let's, yeah. let's really assess every piece of the puzzle here. So stuff that we thought weren't, you know, where we were going to focus time, they were really interested in, in spending more time on it. So the things that they picked up uh, were probably very different maybe mm. to where we saw the, the initial meeting going. Um, that, that was quite, it was really interesting. And I would say probably a little bit, not off court, like uh, confronting realistically. It probably, and I probably took it a little bit maybe harder than Joshi, but... Um, it, it realistically took me a couple of days to even process what they had told us. And, and that's just in all honesty in terms of a okay, cable. Well, you know, they gave us 90% positive feedback, 10% constructive. And it wasn't that, I mean, they were very respectful, but it's kind of like, you know, always focus on that 10%, don't you, mm -hmm. rather than the 90% great well, what, stuff. Was it a bit of the case that you a lot of that stuff you'd assumed that that was all locked in and you you had pre thoughts on that and you just put that aside now we're just focusing on the business and you didn't think that you needed to revisit that stuff is that sort of yeah possibly yeah, yeah it, it kind of was a bit like that yeah you kind of skim over things and you think oh well that's fine and then you kind of move on to the next thing and you there you really thought it would be, would be talking about this, but it's more we're talking about this and like, what? Yeah, and, and I guess like, it's going back to the foundations, yeah. realistically. And, you know, as business owners, we think, oh, we've done the foundations, we're here. And they're going, yeah. no, let's start here because they're on this journey with you and they need to know about all this foundational stuff before they can get on the same page. But maybe mm. there's some cracks there that we overlooked. Yeah. Well, at that stage that you're going through, is that is that every all the board members that you've ended up with? Is that where they're all there, or are you working with one person at the start on this piece and then bringing in the other people? How does that work? Yeah, so we've kind of gone down the path of getting two board members. So initially, we looked at the two areas that we wanted help on, and we're like, well, if we get one person, it'd be good. But you know, having a second person there to bounce ideas with each other as well as we thought probably more ideal. Yeah. So we went down the path of having two, one in the financial services industry and the other one out external. We thought that was important to do that because mm -hmm. um, then they can see different points of view. And then, so we kind of, from there... Um, do you mind sharing what sort of industries, like where, where they are from? Like, Yeah, so she kind of works as like, well, one of her, one works in the financial services and the other one works kind of Sorry. like in a management role in a big company, in corporate. Financial services um, in in a rack platform, so it's okay. quite high um, in in distribution in at a rack platform. Yep. Um, and then uh, um, the other one, uh, she's a business consultant, so she mm. actually rolls out big programs for large corporates, yeah, such as projects, uh, Accenture and Telstra and the UN and stuff like that. So big projects, Australia Post, mm. uh, Post stuff like that. So um, her her uh, aspect realistically is in process management, leadership, that type of thing. Whereas mm. his point of view realistically is in the business growth. Um, so they they both had different strengths that potentially we mm. kind of see are key in a business and mm. maybe things that Josh and I haven't had enough exposure in ourselves realistically. Um, because, you know, as you grow and we feel like we're growing quite quickly, I mean, it's all planned, but it, it, it is quick. Um, you know, management and leadership styles is something that's really, really important to us. You know, we want to not only inspire our members, but inspire our staff to push themselves and, and you know, achieve more and um, kind of practice what we preach, I guess. And then from a business growth point of view, I mean, God, we've never run businesses before. It's our first business. And like I said, you don't... You know if you're doing it right, really. I mean, yeah. we think we're doing it okay, but... You just need to, you know, get a second opinion. Yeah. You don't know what you don't know. Well, exactly. That's right, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, so it's, it's really 
good. And so um, the initial um, chat, so we met with them both. So it was with both of them? Um, so how it originally started was mm. um, once we decided who we wanted, we went and asked them. Um, so sometimes, and, and in a lot of cases, it comes with obviously remuneration to pay board members um, mm. to, to sit on an advisory board. In our case, we were very lucky that both of them declined any payment, so which obviously helps a small business like us. I've got equity. Pardon? No. No. <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> But it'll be 10%, thank you. They are. They are. They just, to be honest, just want to see us do really well, which is, yeah. you know, awesome. Yeah. Just really good people. Yeah, definitely. Um, and so we met with them both and then individually to kind of say, okay, well, what is it firstly that you want to get out of it? And mm -hmm. what would you like to see in the meetings? Like, you know, what information can we give you that will help you help us realistically? Mm -hmm. so I think that was pretty important. So they, I suppose in that way put the agenda together just by having those chats saying okay well, you know what's going to help you and then the um sorry and that really kind of comes down to like if you give the more information you give them the more you're going to get out of it like yeah. more open and honest you are if you yeah. say well this is like literally all of our financials we think we probably have a spending here and you know what are your thoughts you know we've got issues with this how can you help us like yeah you really have to open up because the more you open up, the more you get out of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So was it a bit like, did it feel a bit like a sort of a counselling session? That's the... <laughs> yeah. in, so, in a way, do you know what? I, I, I kind of felt like when we were doing it that this is how our clients would feel. Yeah. You know when you come mm -hmm. in and like when they come and sit with us and say, well, okay, well, here are my, all of my financials mm -hmm. and this is what I'm trying to achieve. I don't know if I'm doing it right and these are where I think I'm going wrong. It was kind of like that. And it was like, it's oh, kind of shit. It's really. Like, you're going in there and you're like, wow, like I have to tell you all this and you're going to help me with all this. Yeah. And then kind it of exactly. shine the spotlight on things that, you know, we haven't thought about. And I mean, this is exactly the same for our clients. So it was kind of good for us to be like, oh, okay, well, this is how they're feeling. Mm. Um, yeah, and that was good. So the initial board meeting, yeah, was, you know, Josh and myself and our two board members. So the reason that we chose only to use two instead of maybe three or four or something like that um, is because when we met with them both, they and told them obviously about each other, introduced them, etc. They were saying that um, at this point in time, let's let them work together and then over time they'll be able to tell us if and what other maybe weakness or area or other board member we might want to bring in mm. to fill that void, I guess. So we're kind of being led by them a little bit in terms of if okay. they feel there's a missing piece. Yeah. Well, usually you may well get someone in marketing or IT just to kind of make it kind of even, but when we thought about it, we're like, well, we don't really need that oh, yeah. at the moment. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So would you say, like, if people are going out, what sort of remuneration would they, because I'm sure you guys looked into, like, what people would pay. What what would should people have in their mind if they were going to be paying for the board? Mm -hmm. uh, board? Yeah. Good question. It depends on the time and how often you want to catch up or like anything really. But I would suggest somewhere between like 5000 and 20000 a year. Depends how highly qualified yeah. they are. But I mean, yeah, they can definitely get up to around $20,000 per annum if, if you're needing that type of specialist expertise. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's probably four quarterly meetings. Um, but on, on top of that, I mean, they are really great in terms of just the experience that they have and the contacts that they have. And um, mm. it just brings a whole nother dimension, I guess. And she, we're only mm. really early days. Yeah. And just, As in we've had one meeting. Yeah, well, we have one, <laughs> well, well, with the four few, of us. Yeah, all of us together. It's going to take us a yeah. quarter just to <laughs> keep right with that. Oh, so, yes. um, How long was that first period, like that initial onboarding, so to speak? That's like eight months. Yeah, it would have. To yeah. work on what we wanted, then to sit down with them individually, then work, try to get a time that suits both of them. And yeah. It's, yeah, been a fairly long process. And to get all the information together that they needed, yeah, yeah it mm. really was about a month. Mm -hmm. Sorry, how, how, many, how many sessions did you have with them in that initial, uh, that initial period? Probably two each. 
initially together. Two probably phone calls as well. Formal so. and then a lot of contact yeah. informally. <laughs> mm. yep. Um back backing in from from back in well, it's a bit it's a bit like the advice process sort of thing. You've had two initial meetings and there's been a whole lot of information the clients had to go away and, and work out and come back with. Yeah. And essentially it's very similar. Yeah. If you, yeah, if you think about the whole thing, you know, kind of yeah, try to find the advisor, you find the right advisor, you go through the process, gather all the information. It's yeah, like pretty much the same. Yeah. Good way to look at it, Andrew. I like it. <laughs> oh, I really like it as a parallel. It's like the adv- advising for the advisor sort of thing. Like it's- yeah, it is. No, it really is. It is. I need to get one of these boards, I think. Um- <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, that's exactly hey, right. So how was, um, so you had those sessions and obviously um, big discovery process and you've had two, two, was it, or one since then? So like the official... Um, We've had one official and it literally was two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. So on the back of that, obviously action items have gone out and we've started seeing stuff flow through from that. Um, And one of our board members who's, I suppose, more on the the leadership management side, um, she's actually going to be coming in and doing uh, formal training with us in regards Mm -hmm. to how she feels that she can help Mm -hmm. um, our other board member he's going to be helping he's been sending through data in terms of you know targets that we should be looking at um and contacts that we should be talking to different connections and stuff like that so it happens quite quickly yeah. once yeah. um once we got off and up and running i feel like yeah it's just kind of started to happen yeah quite rapidly after that and we've been able to kind of already mm. see changes i mean obviously we're not seeing the outcome but we are seeing changes yeah, yeah so so they have they do they have an under, were they able to give you an understanding of what to expect over the initial period? Is was that something that I guess is it like a high work high workload for you at the front and then it sort of starts to get a bit a bit more maintenance? Is that I don't know, it depends what you're trying to get out of it, because if you want to get a lot out of it, you have to put in a fair bit of work. So we're gonna to have to I can see moving forward, we've got a lot of stuff to do. If anything, it's going to get probably more in detail of the stuff that we wanted to get out of it and putting more time around that. Mm -hmm. So it's probably more work almost because we really want to change and we can see the change and the benefit of the change. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be a fair bit of time on the film. Yeah, but um, and I agree. I reckon that this front end, you know, these initial problems, two years or whatever it is, is going to be top end realistically. And then I wouldn't say... I don't see it getting to a point of maintenance. And I mean, both of them have been very honest. They're kind of saying, you know, our tenure on the board, realistically, it'll get to a point where you almost outgrow us and have different skill sets that you need to bring in to, mm. um, to grow that part of the business. So they're both really um, happy to... Oh, so that's where it. it's not quite like a, an advice business because our clients are for life. That's- <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Who would want to leave? They don't have um, yeah, so they've kind of said, well, you know, over time we will find somebody else and like in terms of what skills that you need or bring other people on realistically. So I kind of feel that it, the, the workload will just change. Mm, for sure. And so I mean, it, sorry. so what, what have been the, the quick wins that you've, like the things that you've seen just change like in the short term? For me, it was really aligning and our personal goals and our business goals. Mm. And we had all these, but we kind of, I don't know, now we've aligned them really a, a lot more close. So now we know exactly where we're heading and what kind of needs to be done to get to that point. Yeah. So just that clarity and the focus on that is probably one key thing. Yeah. And the other one for me is really around, we've got lots of these little ideas that we're looking at doing. You know, for, as an example would be kind of making another potential pursue well somewhere else. But when they, we went down and thought about this, they were like, well, what's, what are your personal goals? Is that actually going to help you get to that? And we kind of thought, well, maybe not. So do we really need to be doing that? So it kind of makes you think about these little things that you're trying to do, but is it actually going to help you with what the business and your personal goals are? Yeah, because there's always, there's always something else to do or something else to implement. Some 
great idea that another advisor is doing or, mm. you know, that a completely different industry is doing. You're like, that's awesome. How can I implement that? Yeah. But if you don't actually think, well, actually, how is that aligned yeah. with where we're going? And is that going to take us off the path to, to the bigger vision or the bigger purpose? So has there been a, a big parking of stuff that was sitting on the, the, the list of things to do yeah. and you've been able to go through and go, yeah, that's sitting over here. That may come up in the future, but... It's, yeah. it's not relevant right now. So yeah. we have this, um, I suppose, a matrix realistically in terms of the different projects that we're working on. And so importance and urgency is sitting up in this corner here. Mm-hmm. And Josh and I being the people, we're, like, we're trying to like cram everything up into the, you know, this top. <laughs> <laughs> yes, super literally everything. <laughs> And then, so, and then when we couldn't fit enough, we're like, oh, we'll just add another column for super, super urgent, you know what I mean? So that's the people that we are. This then, done this. <laughs> um, and because you're a small business, you're like, oh, we can do that really quickly. But then um, I guess over time, we've kind of just slowed down and, and they've kind of said, well, what is really urgent here? Like, let's be really clear in how mm. much time you have for this really urgent, really important activity. Um, and maybe the ones that you're focusing on are more of a, you know, medium or longer term um, type, type goal. So, um, yeah, so we use this matrix and they're kind of transitioning us onto, you know, the horizon one, horizon two, horizon three in terms of um, how much time each day should be spent on each activity. Mm. Yeah, that's good. That sounds like um, who's, who's the more free-flowing uh, of you two, which one? Which one's really sort of? It's harder for them to fit into this structure. We've oh, we're both pretty structured, oh, really. Yeah. But if anyone, it'd probably be me. I'd say free flowing. Yeah, yeah. Josh is more, <laughs> more easy going than me. I'd say. Does he sort of? Is he more in the yellow box? If we go back to Horizons days, the the HBDI sort of. Uh, mm. They were both in the yellow. That's probably. <laughs> the <best laughs> yeah. One. yeah. So the advisory board is really important. <laughs> um, yeah, we are probably, probably quite... We are quite yellow. Yeah. Big, big thinkers. And that's why we've got so many different ideas on that. The matrix sample is explaining. That's why we keep employing people so to important. actually do the detail and do it for us. We'll think yeah. of the idea. We'll just employ people to do it for us. Yeah, it's all about complementing your skill set. That's uh, exactly. That's right. We've got, uh, we've got Benjamin Marsh and uh, our policy guru from the FBA. He's, he's sort of he wants to delve into um, how you decided you wanted those particular people. And like, is it right from what you guys were saying before that you you sort of just reached out a bit and then um, sort of bounced off the people that you were talking with? Is that sort of, did you, ha- you, you said you sort of had an idea to get a group of people um, initially of all different areas that would then all have different skill sets. And then you gravitated towards people that just sort of you resonated with or. Um... Yeah, it's a good point. I mean, they had to fit like um, values. So we want to make sure they culturally, you know, got along and then they had the same values, but that they fit the, the what we wanted to get out of the actual board of advice and they both kind of fit perfect really. Yeah, so one was, well, what are Josh and my weaknesses yeah. and what skill sets can they bring to complement where we downfall? Mm-hmm. Um, but more than that, the biggest thing, and like Josh said, was, was it was the values piece and it's everything that we do. Realistically, we try and align um, or surround ourselves with people with the same values as us. So, you know, if they were all about, well, you know, revenue, 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 like where are you guys going and how much is this, like that that stuff doesn't resonate with us um, to a level probably that it should. But um, it, it's more so about, well, how can we help more people and how, you know, how can we have, you know, more fun and help our members have more fun and mm-hmm. how can they have more fulfilling lifestyles and um, how does that, yeah, resonate with us? So the, the people that we chose, um, I suppose luckily we had a, a good enough circle and, and connections um, with these people that, that we were able just to call on them. And, and to be very honest, they very quickly came to mind. Yeah. When we were playing, we were writing down names as to well, who are the types of people that we know that fit into these buckets. These were people that were at the top of the list. As mm-hmm. to, in an ideal world, we would love to get these people and luckily they were... Happy to say yes. Mm. With, with that process there, was anyone helping you with that process at all or was that the two of you just putting your heads together? 
It was the two of us, realistically. Yes. I suppose it's kind of hard. I mean, mm. you think why do you have a board of advisors to kind of help you point out your weaknesses? But at that point in time, when we didn't have anyone, it was us pointing out our own weaknesses, I guess. But no, you're right. It kind of, you almost, um, yeah, maybe we should have had somebody independent assisting. Oh, I don't know. I'm just, I was just curious whether that was something. No, it wouldn't hurt. No, yeah. it wouldn't hurt. But I guess I suppose that's probably why we, um, when speaking to them, they were like, well, we'll help you assess if you need somebody else. Yes. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's fair enough. Yeah. Cool. Well, they, so in terms of, like we've sort of talked about what's, what's improved a bit and like the clarity, what, what were, was there any really hard truths that popped up? Like that <laughs> were just yeah. like, shit, I don't want to give up this business. This doesn't make sense anymore. I don't want to do it, like... <laughs> <laughs> what do we do? Well, there was one, wasn't there? Uh, <laughs> so the biggest one for me and, and the one that hit home, I guess, so I'm, you know, very, oh, I don't know, proud in terms of the, the way that, um, I suppose, my, like, management style and leadership and it, it really hit home for me and it probably was very confronting for them, because um, I, I am a bit of a perfectionist and I know that and I, you know, wholeheartedly like... Bit. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, that shows in the quality of your work. Thank you. Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> smooth, smooth. Winner. <laughs> <laughs> but um, understanding that that also can be a... Um, a deterrent, I guess, for people to, to try new things. And, you know, so we, we try and inspire the guys to be innovative, yet when I'm being a perfectionist, maybe that's giving a conflicting message as, mm. okay, well, you know, maybe they mm. shouldn't be trying. So, I mean, that was probably the most confronting yeah. thing for me. It hit me straight between the eyes. Um, what, know, so was it pretty much, Sam, like, hands off? Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, it was quite easy for us to pick on you that. <laughs> so, um, Josh is there going, oh, how good. It's like they're on my yeah. side. I've got someone in my corner. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Josh has got, got out of the popcorn. I'm bloody like, like watching me get drilled. Like, it was not right that. Up, yeah. <laughs> well, how, how, about, uh, how about Josh? <laughs> Sorry, how about me? Oh. They didn't really pick on me too much. No, 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 just had a business list. What, what kind of things did I kind of get out of it? Um, the home truth. Oh, it's probably, I think, that I need to be stricter in my management style. We kind of need to be on the same page with our management style. So, so I've got really different ways of managing. And that kind of made me think, well, I need to, you know, probably pull my socks up a little bit. So that was a little bit hard to yeah. kind of take, but yeah. understandable. And you know, that's why you kind of do something like this is to try to improve yourself. So yeah, yeah that for me was great to learn yeah. that. But and I think that hard. the it's reason that they put a lot of emphasis on our management and leadership is because, you know, we're a growing team, but the biggest thing for us realistically is the, the quality of the people in our team. And, you know, if they're happy and if they're thriving and pushing themselves. Um, so that's a big focus for us. And so, you know, we, we did lean on them a lot for that. And so, mm -hmm. as I was saying, one of, one of the guys is coming in and, and doing one-on-one -on -one coaching with us in terms of how Josh and I can be more consistent in our leadership style. But probably mm -hmm. not only our uh, so leadership processes and, and just trying to make mm -hmm. an all-round more efficient business. Yeah. Um, is the team brought in at any point a part of this process or? No, no not initially. No, we haven't as yet. Probably, um, yeah, for a reason, I'd say. I'd say this is, at this point in time, it's more to set strategic direction for the yeah. business. So our um, vision realistically is that Josh and I are the ones and it needs to be you know, a, a top-down approach in terms of where the strategy is going for the business and the direction, and if we can properly inspire and lead the team, then, you know, it's they'll be on the same page as us and to go. Otherwise, it can be quite, again, conflicting if they're seeing, like, oh, my God, we're working on so many different things. Like, where, where do I really fit into this? Mm -hmm. So that's probably why we decided 
yeah, mm. against it. And we have like a, yeah, I suppose like a planning day every month. So where we kind of sit down as a whole team and go through, you know, what's working, what's not working, what are we changing, what's yeah. the new policy, procedure, yeah. et cetera, et cetera, with the whole team. So okay. we kind of make sure we spend a lot of time kind of working with the team together to try to make sure that Pursue Wells operating as good as it can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so and that was an existing process you already had? Yeah, that was, yeah. Yeah, correct. So, yeah. Is there any new things that you were, you've, you've started to do that um, you weren't doing before in that space? Or? In, in terms of the planning days and such? In terms of team management and coordination with the team, is there anything yeah. that's... So um, we've kind of um, now implementing, um, so probably two things, um, I suppose a list of non-negotiables as to business expectations, mm. KPIs around behavioural management. That's the SAM list. The SAM list, exactly. <laughs> so things that I generally... you got the Josh like. list. <laughs> and then I have to actually like let other things slide. <laughs> so I need mean, this like my, yeah. if, if you don't, if you do this right, then I'll let other things that may not be as vital go because you know this is the stuff that really matters so that that's the thing for me <laughs> yeah. um and but yeah but kpis around behavioral management as well as so you know there, there's certain ways to approach things there's certain ways to show up to work there's certain ways um just more so in terms of um you know kpis are a lot of the time set around the actual work done like when our biggest thing is um, you know, having fun and being like fulfilled, mm. then you have to have KPIs around your behaviour as well. I mean, mm. they, they kind of go hand in hand. So that's probably one big thing. Yep. And the other one, um, so for our planning days, we've now implemented a report that each of the team members will fill out before the day. So it's, you know, different things that they want to talk to the directors about, different things um, that they think are working really well, different operational decisions they want to um, to be made. So it's mm. kind of just more formalised it to make it more uh, efficient and effective and to ensure that everyone gets enough time, you know, to speak up about what, what's on their mind and how they think and how mm. they feel that they can um, add value into the team. Yeah, nice no, one. Well, oh, it's their business as it is ours and we want them to feel like that. So they've got, you know, they can make a decision as well they can come up with ideas and then we look at putting that on the the matrix that we were talking about as well. So, yeah, so that's become your reference point on how yeah. you feel, so what gets done in practical. Yeah. yeah. Correct, yeah. And that really came from this as well. So we kind of had all these ideas on, you know, different lists on Trello and, you know, all our different project lists. And then we kind of like, well, we need to start doing this. So that kind of helped, you know, coming from having this board of advice. Condense and prioritise. And yeah. I guess, you know, on top of it, a lot of the the different ideas that, um, you know, Josh and I are talking about have also come from the AFA board, you know, mm -hmm. sitting, sitting on that. They, those guys have helped me keep seeing not only what their businesses are doing, because, I mean, everyone on that board is pretty unreal, but um, just seeing the different things that we do at a board level in terms of prioritisation, mm -hmm. strategic direction, and um, how everyone's given the chance to speak up. So it's really interesting at that level and how I can implement, you know, the really great practices there into our practice. Yeah. Well, yeah, so, so for the, some of the practices out there, they can't be bothered going through the whole advisory board process. What are the top three things that are on the strategic direction? What do you think, what have you designated as important and urgent strategically and in the project pipeline? Oh, I love that. Um, so, well, initially, so the KPIs that Sam was mentioning, so around the behavioural side of things, so that's kind of one. Um, what other bits and bits? Our, um, our marketing um, yeah. for us is, is up the top in terms of brand awareness, yeah. um, executive profiling and things like that. So that's just really high for us. And in terms of how we're actually going to roll that out, whether or not we bring someone on, so just a, an overall strategy for our marketing and branding piece. And then there was probably more of the efficiency side of things and trying to... with within the team, trying to make them work to the capacity that they can work at so they continue to grow as a person. Um, so kind of outsourcing some things that are kind of taking a lot of time for them that we can do potentially cheaper and more effective somewhere else. Mm -hmm. so any any tech sort of... Everyone loves a bit of tech on oh, Any tech? So. <laughs> I'm just doing the... I'm asking the questions. You guys are the... <laughs> what parts on you today? 
Oh, gosh. Oh, we use a lot of tech stuff, but I think, you know, nowadays it's quite common for people to use, you know, Trello and Slack. 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 Like, I mean, dogs. so some of our stuff, so we have um, one of our staff members is based in New Zealand and one is over in the Philippines. And so, you know, all of our remote desktops and stuff, we need to be able to, like, chat to people, Zoom and stuff like that. So we utilise mm. all of that quite a lot. I mean, that's just our day-to-day processes because we're not all yeah. in one spot. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's just day-to-day for us. And we, so we make sure we have a team meeting every day because it's hard having... You know, people in all different areas of the world, so they kind of are isolated from the team, so we want to keep that team culture. So we make sure we phone everyone every day in the team meeting, go through what our positive is for the day and then what we've got. Okay, so you set a time each day that everyone jumps in? Yeah, so 8.45 every morning, well, 8.45 here in yep. Australia. Uh, every morning we catch up just for 10 minutes and just run around the group, what's been going on in terms of just your own life, like yep. what's something positive that happened the day before and then what's on for the day and how can we help each other and, you know, try yeah, nice. that. And how, how long does that last for? So yeah, we try to cut it off at 15 minutes. Yep. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, a, it's always, that would be <laughs> hard for you, Sammy. Pardon? That would be hard for you, wouldn't it? I know. <laughs> yeah, this morning. I have to cut her off daily. So, so oh, that's we, great, then. Moving <laughs> on. We normally only have one positive, and I was like, well, I'm just so excited to have but three positive. And Josh is like, no, one. Just need one. So, <laughs> I'm like, go, go, go. Yeah. <laughs> well, guys, you guys, you've been awesome today. Thank you for sharing uh, what your journey's been with the advisory board. Uh, it's, I'm sure there's a number of people out there that are, it's resonating with and they're thinking, well, it's sort of, it's, you're sort of telling your clients that they should be um, consulting with you and um, having you help them with their decision making to make sure they don't mess up. Um, what, what makes us so special that uh, there's not someone out there to help us on the same thing. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, really, really appreciate you sharing. Uh, no people have questions, I mean, yeah. feel free to reach out to us. I'm more than happy to. Yeah, so both them. Sammy and, and Josh are in the Facebook group, guys. So, um, if you're not in the Facebook group and you're listening to this on the podcast or on YouTube, uh, jump in the Facebook group. Sammy and Josh are in there. Everyone, um, you can tag them in a question, put them on the spot. They'll, they'll be fine to. <laughs> We answer and uh, and if you have any other questions, just uh, jump jot them into the actual XY Live, uh, the Facebook Live feed that's going to be sitting in the Facebook group as well. So, looking forward to next week, Sammy. Very exciting. Yeah, yeah, great experience. Yeah. yeah, I hope you hope you haven't given away too much of the uh, the session next week today. Oh, yeah. I've got plenty in the bag. <laughs> <laughs> I can talk for days. You know. <laughs> awesome. Oh, Thanks exciting so times. Much. And um, best of luck to everyone out there who's up for awards tonight in the IFA. Yeah, congrats. Yeah. Right. So there's, there's a lot of uh, a lot of people in the XY Advisor group that are up for awards. And, uh, Including yourself, Adrian? No, no, you gotta, you got to have something to be awarded for. So, uh, <laughs> oh, come on, mate. <laughs> <laughs> but, but there is some awesome people, YOLO and et cetera. So, uh, yeah, good luck to everyone. Yeah, oh, good luck, yeah. everyone. And thanks for your question, Ben, as well. Yeah. All right, well, signing off from XY Advisor. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye.